Second. New Jersey is recognized for three minutes. And uh, before I begin, I just have to respond to the chairman's remarks. You know, Mr. Chairman, I'd ask you to listen to what uh, the gentleman from Virginia uh, said before. We're not about, at this point in time, looking back. We're about looking forward, and we're not about looking at pointing blame. I know you've been on the floor for special orders speaking for over an hour saying that you're not at fault, and you come here again to say that you're not the responsible party, that nothing to do with as far as the problems with the GSEs, Fannie Mae, or Freddie Mac can be laid at your footsteps, and it's all the Republicans' fault. Well, we're not here about trying to point blame to uh, s actions that were taken in the committee. We're not here to point blame when you said, let's just roll the dice and see what happens. We're not here to point blame at you to say that um, uh, when you said repeatedly in the past that uh, there's not a systemic risk with the GSEs. We're not here to about that, we are where the American pu public is to look forward to see what we can do now with the crisis that we're in. And I rise today with a message from the American people and that they are simply tired of this hearing of pointing blame and they are tired of the hollow promises of reform from Speaker Pelosi and the Democrat majority. They are tired of hearing the Fannie Mae and for Freddie Mac are projected to cost the taxpayers upwards to $389 billion. So they're probably a little bit shocked when they hear you say that it's not going to cost the American public anything. We know that it will cost in the past upwards to, to, for the past actions $389 billion and go Going forwards, who knows exactly what it will cost the American taxpayers? You know, since taking over Fannie and Freddie Mac, the two government-sponsored mortgage-backed um, companies, the American taxpayers have spent so far $145 billion for these two companies. And yet, and here's the important point, this is what we're trying to make here, is that Congress still has not considered any proposals whatsoever to reform these companies and recoup those taxpayer dollars. We're about to go into conference, and there is nothing in the Senate or the House bills to deal with that situation. We, on the other hand, in this U-cut proposal that's on the floor right now, would, would suggest that we can save the American taxpayers how much money? Up to $30 billion. Look, I know that uh, originally Congress put a cap of $200 billion on it, and then the administration lifted that cap and raised up to $400 billion that it could cost the taxpayers. And then in the dead of night on the Christmas Eve, um, Christmas Eve 2009, they lifted that cap and went even further and said it's unlimited over the next three years what it will cost the American taxpayers to bail out Fannie and Freddie. I know that the administration did all that. I also know that there's nowhere projected or listed really honestly in the uh, budget um, that we're still waiting to hear, as uh, the gentleman from Texas uh, just pointed out. We know also that, as we say, there is no plan from the majority or from this administration to try to rein that in to save these $30 billion, and that's why we come to the floor to do just that, because the American, tax, American taxpayers, American voters have said through UCUT that that is exactly what we need to do. You know, Professor uh, Hal Scott from the Harvard Law School noted, he noted how incomplete the financial service regulatory reform legislation is. He said this, it doesn't address GSE reforms, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which arguably is the most costly part of the entire bailout. If you look at the money we've actually spent, the GSEs are costing us billions, and there's no solutions from the White House. I yield back.